enjoy it when I get latex in my hair. All right. Uh, Rob is here. Rob is talking to my dogs. He's trying to teach them that getting latex in their hair is bad. He's going to teach them the same way you teach children to swim. Throw them in the deep end of the pool. Um, you might notice I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday, but really that's a trick. I'm wearing a different shirt, but I put this shirt on over that shirt so that only this shirt gets messed up. In theory. Come over here. Yesterday we made this uh, glove mold back half. Laid it down. That video directly precedes this one in order. Um, and now we're gonna get this guy ready to mold. Have some pledge. I observed. That is just one layer of pledge. I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and put on another one. Alexa, count down 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Grab some Vaseline. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the Vaseline so that it uh, We'll go on to this nice and easy. Every now and then I might have to stop what I'm doing to grab a puppy because they like to wreak havoc. Havoc is their favorite color. Uh, there is no Shannon this evening. Um, she hasn't come to her senses and left me. She's just over at the house making dinner. Vaseline is a petroleum product. I don't know if it'll catch flame, but I've never lit it on fire with a heat gun yet. However, getting hot Vaseline on you really sucks. It leaves you with slimy blisters. Hold me close to slimy blisters. And I am not hitting the sculpture at all with this. All I am hitting is the mold wall that will be in between the two halves of the mold. I do not want Vaseline on my sculpture. I do not want Vaseline to be absorbed into the plaster because Vaseline will fill the pores in the mold that wick latex. Any kind of oil will do that, Pam. So don't spray your sculpture with Pam, just your mold wall. And you know what? Hey, Rob. Yes, sir. Have you got time to tell a story or talk them through some of the stuff that you're doing? Because I'm going to get my computer so I can read comments. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. So Talk about the mold we made today and what happened. Oh, oh boy. So, today, we made a very large mold. Actually, it's been in the process of being made for about a week. It's three and a half feet. It's three feet tall, about three feet wide. Can't tell you what it is, but it's massive. Hello, Scott. Uh, the whole one half weighs about 150 pounds. It's a two-part mold. The other half weighs almost 200. Hey, James. It is a beast uh, two-part mold uh, we spent the better part of the day clearing all the clay out of it after we cracked the mold and then I took it outside in the cold rain and pressure washed it and got all the clay out of it so tomorrow it'll be dry ready to be strapped up and poured and this this is a big boy I uh, I don't think I'm at liberty to say what it is but I I, I uh, we started I started working on it two weeks ago and it's fantastic. Stan! Here you go, man. Stan the man! Oh my god. People we're live. Drive in the rain. Just, <laughs> we're live. People can't drive in the rain. I say it again. People can't drive in the rain. But if you'd like to tell a story, I gotta pick some stuff out of this mold. 
Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Oh. I made six figures. I gave it all up for this. That is not true. I was a stay-at-home dad for seven years, and then I found this. You're telling a great story. That is a great story. No reason for me to, uh, to ruin that. Look at this Hulk hand. It's great. Right? He's got one coat of pledge on it. He's got to do two more uh, ten-minute increments between them. So whenever he comes back, I think he had decided to relocate the doggos. Oh, there was a puppy fest, wasn't there? There was a puppy fest. There as was much, a firefight. As much as I love the puppies, I don't yeah, want. They them, do have a way to get around, don't they? I'd rather. I don't want them eating my latex. I'll let my hat control. My head's cold. See, when you're bald, your head gets cold. <laughs> I'm not laughing because he's bald. I'm laughing because his head was cold. I don't care if he's bald. What else we got? Let's see. Anything else? Trans world preparations. Is that right, George? We are just na on it. We got... I got a poor list of like 86 masks. And right now, I'm probably about 20 some odd in. We finished up our little packet, so we are alive, just so you know. I warned him. Hey, Stan starts coming in and talking treason. I'm talking about poor drivers in the rain. That is one thing about Texas drivers, man. It starts to rain, and everybody just loses their senses. Rain, snow, pick one. We don't get snow. We get ice. One sixteenth of an inch and all of Dallas shuts down. That's right. That's right. It's true. All of Dallas shuts down and... Schools, you name it. And all the supermarkets sell out of water the day before. <laughs> oh, this looks so cool. Now we'll play the game of what was Alan watching last night when he shut his computer off at 2 in the morning. And it wasn't Spiderwick. Okay, what are we trimming? Did you say Spiderwick? I watched Spider-Man Chronicles in here last night while I was working. That's not a bad film. Nosferatu. And Grouch. And the Grouch. Faux Shizzle. Trim and base. Trim and base. Trim strap base. Trim strap base. Yay! We got a lot of masks to make. You tell them about the mold? Yeah, I did. I talked about the big mold. I did not tell them what it is. I just said it was big. It was is this the mold from yesterday? Oh, no. The one at work. The one more at Oh, oh, oh. Which I did not make it over to see today. It's a monster, dude. Is it cool? Apparently I was shopping on Amazon. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Getting more mesh shirts? Got to get those mesh shirts. You guys haven't logged in just to watch me on the computer, I swear. I need to brush my hair. It looks crazy. As good as you are. Go here. No. So for those of you who are curious as to what I'm doing, I'm about to pour uh, teeth, a very toothy mold, one of the plant monsters that we sell all the time. And so in order to make sure that there's no bubbles in, in the teeth, I tend to take some latex separately and thin it with ammonia so I have a nice slip that I can pour into the, the tooth. The huge mold is a moray eel. It's a moray eel head. Hey, Scott. Scott! Ah, oh, field walker masks. I use lemon scented, well, yeah, I use lemon scented pledge, but any pledge will work as a release between the clay and the plaster. That's what I spray onto my mold. Just a little bit. Though. Onto my sculpt before I mold. Just a little bit. Hello, Trans World Preparations. You are correct. And hello, Hattie B. Stick. Okay. Yes, you, you made it. What's funny is I'm on live enough now. All the people who go on regularly, they, they're like, they say hi to each other. And that's like half of the comments. What's up, dude? How's it going? How's your mom? There's things. Things are great. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Why English grandmas watch my uh, YouTube, I have no idea. 
I've never had the heat gun set the Vaseline on fire. Every now and then these heat guns go bad and they shoot small balls of fire out of them. So that's they do do that. Just as fun as you think. It's only happened what? Five times. This year? No, no. Like, Last like in the past eight to ten years, I've had five of them shoot fireballs. One did it consistently, and I kept that one. You know, because for some. Reason. Yeah, no longer shot out heat. It just shot out like four feet of flame for on a trigger. So I had I had a little flamethrower. For science. It was corded, but you know. So you're very deadly up to an eight foot range. Yeah. I gotta get I have to get an extension cord. Be right back. Oh right. sorry. 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 <laughs> but should the apocalypse happen, it would be good to fend off like zombies from one particular window. Alexa, stop. That's 10 minutes. So I can put on my second coat of pledge. Now you gotta be careful with the pledge. Don't use too much. If you cannot see your sculpture, you have used too much pledge. I learned this. General as a note. That pledge is acidic. Rob decided to uh, really get in there with the pledge. <laughs> put on about half an inch of it onto the sculpture. Uh, I did not murder him, but I think that's good. He's still here. He was really excited about putting Pledge on, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. The nozzle, it went crazy. It was shooting me wax everywhere. All right, buddy. So, Stan and I were discussing uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yesterday. The Netflix show yesterday. All right. And you know, there's there's any number of things that you could choose to have make you uncomfortable. There's just a lot of sex in it for me for it to be about a 15 or 16 year old, like a lot. It's 15 through most of the first season, and there's like this really uncomfortable bathtub scene, and yeah. I have not seen it. I'm not a fan. I mean, I like the monsters on the show. There's some decent monsters. Satan looks cool. I'm enjoying October Faction. Uh, me and Shannon watched the first episode of October Faction. Oh, pop out shot. Shot. Oh, you know what? My mouse is in my pocket. So it's been affecting my computer as I walk around. <laughs> oh. Hello, weird kid. Be nice to your knees. Don't miss them. Pop out chat. There we go. Okay, so if I got Vaseline on my pledge or pledge on my Vaseline, it's not like, you know, two great tastes that go great together, but it's also not bad either. It's really, it's no big deal. Um, not uncommon. The pledge I kind of put over everything anyway. But the Vaseline, I make sure I only keep on the plaster wall. You know, and if a little bit gets on, that's not the end of the world. I'm just saying, don't paint it on. The Vaseline or the... The... What? Vaseline. Have I thought of doing small church bells as a necklace for him? Uh, I had not. I was going to make him a dead cat to sort of walk around with, which uh, really has nothing to do with uh, the hunchback at all. But just sounded sounded okay. Yeah, you know what? It's to me, now, simple villains, meaning not-so-smart villains, they play with dead cats, to me, because of 
Kill a Mockingbird, when they describe Boo Radley, they, you know, I just, they say that he murders cats. And Lenny from Mice and Men kills bunnies. Not like recreationally. I think it was just like a couple times, but. He killed that cat in the end. Lenny did? And then I forgot the name of the other guy. Yeah, see, no one remembers Lenny's brother, Squiggy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's the name. That's the name. That's definitely who it was. It was Lenny and Squiggy, Squiggy. from To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm, I'm glad they had a really good continuation of their career with Laverne and Joe. Uh, 34 feet of it, thank you, cobwebs and candlesticks. Yes, and cats are not hard, not easy to catch. No, they're wily. Atticus Finch. Well, that wasn't that the lawyer. That, that was, was the lawyer. That was the lawyer. What was Lenny's brother's name? George. 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 Georgie. We'll name him George. I think it was George. I would love him and pet Boo Radley was the bad guy. Yes. Not a bad guy. He was the guy that things got blamed on. Yeah. Canada. Yes, Boo Radley from... Wait. No. Lenny was from Of Mice and Men. Yes. Boo Radley was from To Kill a Mockingbird. Right. He was the African-American fellow that dated the white girl. The people in the comments think they're helping. And boy, are they confusing me. Yeah. I haven't read it since high school either. Left an impression. It's not a bad story. It's better than Grapes of Wrath. Wow, so angry at these grapes. It's a, you want to talk about a depressing book? A depressing book about the depression. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know. Thought would be a feel-good hit of the <laughs> dust bowl. What, what were you thinking? That's right. The grapes of wrath. Still better than Bridge to Terabithia. All these poor people migrating. Where Where's the love? Where the Red Fern Grows is a heartbreaker. Yeah, I don't do dog books like that. You know, My roommate. I don't do never, sad animal stuff. Like after Old Yeller, I checked out of that. My uh, roommate, who's 28, was going through Disney Plus. He had never seen nor heard of Old Yeller and watched <laughs> it. Uh, Did you convince him to watch it? I was like, oh yeah, that's a good, that's a Disney yeah. classic. It's a feel-good Disney movie. You'll enjoy it. It's great. Line it up. He's a little mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not tell me the dog called? Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to? Tell I thought you? they changed the ending in the remake. I thought that that was. So I went and saw the Harley Quinn movie. I told you. Yeah. So it did so poorly at the box office. They've already renamed it. What? They what? renamed it because it had a really long title. Birds of Prey. The, the Emancipation of One Fabulous Harley Quinn. Right. Now it's called Birds of Prey colon. Harley Quinn. Okay. That's that's the new name of the movie. Now, see, I've heard it did pretty good. Maybe they just they did didn't not. type all of it. It was the lowest grossing DC title so far. Really? Really. Wow. <laughs> Cobwebs and Candlesticks says, Oh, Christ, you just want to watch a grown man cry. <laughs> Talking to you about watching Old Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? He uses the tears to make his martinis. That's right. If you mix tears into your plaster, it kicks faster. Nine. Nine? Nine. Go ahead and get this up. Nope. Got him done. Okay. Let's do this guy. Oh, this is one meaty mold. Which one is that? It's a troll. I'm a mold. I'm a meaty mold. I'm a real meaty mold. You'd think as much as I move all these big rocks around, I'd get some guns. You'd think that. Instead of a bad back. Instead of a bad back? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something to be I was looking at a double uh, full head Krampus. Yeah. Which my back pretty good. That thing weighs like a million pounds. Well, you know what? The old single. The old half mass Krampus mold weighs more. Really? It was box molded. Mm -hmm. uh, it had these big old horn nubs on it. Is that what's going on with this troll? Because he's, he's dense. He's box molded, yeah. Okay, that explains it. 
He's a brute. Now, I'm going to re-sculpt the troll because ideally I want it to be a full head mask. Because those are the ones going to match up with the hair suits. Hair suit. Uh, Cobweb says you should make him watch Brian's song right afterwards to do a double whammy. <laughs> that doesn't get you. We'll watch Sophie's Choice and Schindler's List. So, I have a funny story about the movie Brian's song. Uh-oh. There we go. Some people were talking about it, and I thought they were talking about The Life of Brian, <laughs> which is a different movie. All together. And so I was weighing in with my thoughts, and I they decided that I was not a nice person based off of what I thought about what I thought was the life of Brian. Yeah. But it wasn't. That. I'm not the Messiah. That's what the Messiah would say. <laughs> Netflix, they have the uh, Best of Monty Python now. Yeah. And I got ready to start watching it, except that in the title it said Best of Monty Python, Parrot Sketch Not Included. So I skipped <laughs> it. I didn't, I didn't start watching it. How could you not have the Parrot Sketch? I, and I don't even know if it's a joke. Maybe someone stuck around and the Parrot Sketch is there and it's all part of the fun. But uh, Could be a rights issue. It could be, I don't know, but I, I immediately backed out when I saw the rest of the title. Because it's also, because that, the Parrot Sketch ends the Lumberjack song. Right. So it's like... How do you, how do you leave that out? Are the air purifiers on? What? Are the air scrubbers on? No. Can no. you turn them on? Yeah. Do you know the philosopher song from Monty Python? Because I... I'm full of useless knowledge. Oh yeah, you know this. We're making fairy corpses tonight. So it's a baby Yoda for her birthday. This That's right. Get to work, Glenn. This bird is deceased. This is an ex-pet. This bird is no more. Uh, Stan, yeah. go scroll down and see what starts the sentence that ends with big and wrinkly. I don't know if you want to pull on that, Fred. Yeah. Scroll up a little. Yeah. Gloves. Gloves. Awful Yoda gov gloves. Yes, I have. Oh, did you sculpt those, Dark Nook? Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, it, you got to make them big enough for the fingers, you know, you got to... He said he, he did. He did sculpt them. Yeah, that's funny. Or she, whoever, he or she. So I'm just mixing up some plaster here. And, uh... Getting it ready. In order to mold the other half of this glove. Now, what I haven't done yet, is I haven't put on pry points. And that's little bits of clay that'll help me get these two pieces apart. I'm gonna do that while my plaster is resting, if I remember. But that was my plan. My first like 20 molds or so, I had a sheet of what order things had to be done in. I just wrote it out. I'm like, okay, what's the next step? Pry points, because I forgot pry points a couple times. That does make your life harder. Hear Rob grunting from the other room. Yeah, I had a phase where I was box molding things in hydrocal. Not the most uh, weight economical way to do things. Those molds are known as the hernia collection. Alexa, countdown, two minutes. 
two minutes, starting now. Dark Nook is a he. Now, I would think of like a nook as a little more feminine. And if you were like a peninsula, that would be a little more male. You know, like Dark Peninsula, I would know you're a dude. Great. I do like me some good Fiji mermaids. I even like bad Fiji mermaids. Let's be real. So for the record, it is very difficult to put on uh, pry points after you've already Vaseline your mold wall because nothing wants to stick. I think three fry points are going to be fine for this. This overhangs a little more severe than I would like it to be. I'm going to put clay on that. And that clay is going to keep them from locking. I think that's kind of it, though, as far as where I need to. Alexa, stop. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, Fiji mermaids are kind of gross and may horrify a little girl who's into mermaids, just for the record. Because they're like a monkey sewn onto a fish. many like eight-year-old boys look up BG mermaids hoping to see boobs and then they see this horrible monkey son on the fish. Apparently that never happened to Stan because he's been pretty quiet about the whole time. I didn't Google any Fiji mermaids. Oh I'm very sorry to hear about your sister. That's very sad. Saturate, I'll go ahead and mix it by hand. But I did give it that two minutes so it could just become friends and gel together. That's probably the saddest comment anyone has posted. Yeah, Tommy. Way to be a downer, but I am very sorry about your sister. Everyone else is now supposed to say funny, stupid things that their sisters have done in the comments. Just to bring it back up. Bring it back up. Let's 
So early in my haunting career, like, so not right now, all of my actors, I made them wear latex gloves for their costumes because I knew that most of my actors were teenage boys and they were kind of waiting in the dark for teenage girls to come through. So I thought if they had big latex gloves on and couldn't enjoy touching a boob, they would be less likely to touch a boob in the dark. How'd that work out? Uh, pretty good. Right. Yeah. I've had very little illicit boob touching in my career. Illicit. Sea Monster is in the other room and it's still in pieces. I have put that Sea Monster on hiatus, so it's just, it, it's a series of tubes right now. Okay. I'm going ahead and putting on plaster along the seam where the sculpt meets the mold wall. I'm doing that because that's my most likely spot for air bubbles. So by hitting it right off the bat, I'm combating that and I'm not going to let air bubbles happen. I'm making sure that they get visible brush action so that any air bubble leaves. You agitate the plaster, the air is allowed to go up through the plaster and exit. The thicker the plaster, the less likely a bubble is to be able to get through there. Goodbye, cobwebs. I suspect I'll be making this mold for about an hour, maybe. It's only a half a mold. So I should be able to kind of knock it out. Yeah. Your sister married three losers. <laughs> is she at is the she, same time? Is she currently married or is she currently not married? That's the at that's, once. That's the question. So, some advice for someone who wants to network at Transworld this year and be a traveling actor. Um, at Transworld, you cannot be in character on the show floor. Here's a tip. There are several events where you can be in costume. One of them is the costume ball. Get yourself some business cards made up. Go to the costume ball and do not become a drunken mess. Show off your character skills. Be a haunt character. Interact with people at the costume ball the same way that you would interact with guests in a queue line. And then you will be able to, uh, you know, people are going to remember that. And then once you've interacted with them, you could give them, you know, a business card. Kind of on your way out as a parting shot. And as soon as you say that you have a service to offer, figure out their next question is going to be and have an answer. They're probably going to ask you, where are you based out of? They'll probably ask you, what are your rates? You have to be prepared for that and have answers. Because when I go to a yard sale, I hate it when there's no prices on stuff. Because I feel like they're just going to wing it no matter what I ask them. And I have actually asked one person how much something is. They gave me a price I didn't like, I kept looking around. And then I would either ask them later or ask someone else, and the price is different. So know your rates and know those kinds of things, because there are people are going to ask you. Light up. Light up. 
his vote for the gun. All right, so my whole sculpture is now covered, and I'm going now. I'm going for thickness. That's right, old sausage fingers. Let's see here. Well, if I crapped myself at work, I would drive home on my lunch break, too. I might even drive home as soon as it happened. <laughs> I might even quit and never go back. Depends on if somebody saw it. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Nothing to yeah. see. I got I to gotta go. And now I live in Canada. Uh, okay. That's what I'm talking about, Dave. Eh? Let's eat. Let's make some feet. How are the puppies? Uh, the puppies will probably be over here shortly. I have no doubt they're free range outside right now. Um, I'm glad we have more buckets. Let me book it. I'll book it to phone. Let me book it. So, did you get two five gallon buckets of latex? Yes. Okay. Because he he told me that he might have trouble making two five gallon buckets. One, two. Yeah. And then he asked me about my Cobra Prius. Your Cobra Prius? Yes. Worst G.I. Joe vehicle ever. I really wanted these today, by the way. I'm taking the work tomorrow. You are? Yeah. For more ALT by out. the door. Yeah, for more ALT. Because good lord. They, they be some teeth. They be deep, deep in the mouth. They be some teeth. Yeah, the question is 11.30 or 9.15. That's a very important question. 11.30. No, I couldn't even hang out then. I would just go to lunch early. Did I... I gotta go. I Must leave now. Had a potty emergency. Gotta go. No shame in my game. I want to get myself a uh, cricket machine at some point. Just buy a plotter. I believe that asshole. Kim has one. Kim has one. They're small. You need a bigger format plotter. Like a, like a vinyl cutter? Like a vinyl cutter. Because all a cricket is hey, a Nora. tiny vinyl cutter. That's true. Hey, who? Hello, Nora. How you doing, babe? In crickets, you gotta like lay the stuff down on it, and then there's some mat you gotta use to keep it moving so it doesn't mess it all up, and you gotta kind of bake some. Do you know? You can pick up a plotter for like fifteen hundred or something. I saw one that was like three fifty on Amazon, some of Chinese and or sketchy work. Yeah, didn't get the greatest reviews, but for people that don't need it to run eight hours a day every day of the week for their business, they seem to like it. Hey, I'm just making this thicker. What film material am I using? Um, some kind of a foam. And it's got to be lightweight. I will honestly, I'll probably use Loctite foam because uh, it's very lightweight, and I know it'll do a good job of filling that up. And it's also dense enough where I can attach things to it. And it's economical. And it's also fairly economical. Probably having trouble there, sir. No, not more. No more than usual. Rob is sitting on the ground with his legs wrapped around a bucket. I'm going to put the camera on him just in case he stabs his crotch with a screwdriver. Well, that's good. Jennifer, are you in the vinyl cutting business? Yeah, I'm pretty convinced that a lot of my act actor training gigs I got from MHC when I played Carl. Because I would play Carl at the costume ball, and other actor trainers were drunk off their butt, and I was in character. So it was easy for them to see that I can, you know, hold a character, maintain a character, and was a little humorous. 
No crotch stabbing the knight, sir. Okay. Oh. Knight is young, Rob. The knight is young. I do have another bucket over there. Glenn says, do it, Rob. The mob has spoken. I think, I don't know if Glenn had your crotch or just opened the bucket, but either way. I just put it up on a table so I can stab it through. So yeah, all I'm doing right now is I am putting this on here. Jennifer replied, no, I do lettering for craft stuff and my sister's guardrail business trucks. In a reference to your your sister has a guardrail truck business? That's awesome. I have no idea what that's about. You learn so much from me. I think I have something to do with guardrails and trucks. Sometimes I fantasize about jobs where, like, at the end of the day, I'm done thinking about that job. Like a forklift driver. That would be kind of cool because... When you go home, when you leave, someone else is driving and someone call you. Yeah. They don't need your help on a forklift issue. No. They got it handled. You'll deal with some different stuff. Yeah. Know, what, there what, are problems great. that goes along with driving a forklift. I'm sure there are, but they stay at work. They don't follow you home. That's true. Ugh. Pretty sure it just got blast from my eyebrow. Oh, a witness. All right, so I've got plenty of time and I have plenty of plaster. I'm going to do a little trick now because I want to move on to the next stage and I want some of this plaster to be thicker. I don't want all the plaster to be thicker. So I'm going to pull another little bucket. I'm going to thicken some plaster. Horrible that is. And what I want is I want a thicker plaster that I will be able to uh, set fabric on without having it go up and hurt the sculpture. I can handle a little more in there, I can tell. This will get me a much thicker plaster that I can put on top of this. Ideally, I would just wait and let that harden all the way. I'm going to rush it a little. Hello, Donica. Dionica. Do I like body horror? I don't know what body horror is. I probably don't. I like monster movies, not horror movies, really. I wonder if DJs at strip clubs hate cinema. I don't... Why would they hate cinema? Are a lot of strippers named Cinnamon? I will, I will say I have not frequented a lot of strip clubs. Although, a moment of silence for the Texas stripper in Dallas who fell 20 foot off the pole and broke her jaw and oh. really hurt herself. And uh, the video of it is all over the internet. She, she falls, she sustained all those injuries, and she's on the ground for like three seconds, and then she rolls right over and starts twerking. 
Boom. Well, the show must go on, right? Yeah, I mean, you know. That's a lot of professionalism. That is. Because you've got to finish off that last monthly cruise on. Right. You know what, though? Everybody's going to remember her performance. Yeah, that's not the way I want to do it. True. Hope she got some good tips. I want to be memorable and repeatable. That's the biggie. Flaming death! <laughs> Those trimmings. Do we want to find a use from a from a performer aspect? As I, I have been injured while working. Uh, not to that extent. I did break my nose once while I was a uh, quasi, uh, quasi at Skull Kingdom. The no, night. Oh, I, I fell off the building. Oh. Um, but yeah, I broke my nose once. Didn't break character. So shout out to her for having a sense of mind to, hey, show must go on. Possible. Probably in shock. So was Gretel and Hansel a horror movie that came out recently? Alexa, how did Gretel and Hansel do at the box office? This might answer your question. Gretel and Hansel has grossed six million six hundred ten thousand yeah. U.S. dollars in the United States and oh. six million nine hundred thousand U.S. dollars worldwide. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. So in the U.S. it made six point six, and worldwide it made six point nine. Ooh, so, that's rough. There you go with that. Glenn, did you go on purpose? It's about witches. I, sh I should have gone to see it. But right now, it's prep for trans world season, so I don't get to do anything. Yes, we have no time. Monday is my kid's birthday. Yeah? Yeah. Are they twins? Triplets. Triplets. So all three of them are, jeez. What a birthday present buying. Yeah, then you just buy them all the one Xbox. There you go. Say share. Think about college. Think about when they want their first car. Yep. So you're voting for Bernie is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm voting triplets through college, so I'll vote for Bernie Sanders. When I needed my first car, my dad said, go get a job. Yeah. I told him they need to start saving now. I joked around. I didn't believe him. I had to go get a job. Yeah. I had to buy my own car. Have I ever molded separate parts for a single head? Yes, I have. Sometimes you might want to do the ears as a separate mold, or horns is pretty often. Um... Boy, so let's let's go back first to favorite horror movie. The thing. I'm gonna probably say I really like Pumpkinhead. Nice clean story. I also like um, the movie Krampus that came out a while ago. I really like that film. <laughs> I, I know it is horror comedy, but it's good. Okay, now this is still looser, but it'll hold my... my this. Can anyone go to Trans World? Yes, almost anyone can go to Trans World. Am I very receptive? Uh, you are very receptive to come. I tried to read them. Yes. Yeah. It costs $50 million to produce. Woo, they lost some money on that. In a vine, could you mix hybrid count and onto count? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can mix the two of them. Uh, that that doesn't really hurt. It changes the properties a little bit, but not to a degree where it's gonna where you'll hate it. 
I mean, I have, I've mixed a lot of things in my plaster to make it last. Anyone go to Trans World? Um, so here's the kicker with going to Trans World. Trans World's like 50 bucks to get in. It's not expensive. What is expensive is flying to St. Louis and having a hotel and all of those things. So, is it expensive to go to Trans World? Technically, no. Actually, yes. It is expensive to go to Trans World. But it's, it's worth it because that's where the best sales come from. And Scott put up a link for, oh, they bumped it 70 bucks. That's good. I think that'll keep out some of the riffraff. Um, and so here's why I would even say something terrible like that. Um, because Trans World is a business show. It is meant for haunted house um, owners and haunted house workers to conduct business there. Vendors are there to sell things. So if you cannot afford to get in the door, then the theory is you really can't afford to buy much either, so you aren't helping the trans world economy. That is the theory. Um, and you can debate about that all you want, but yeah. At this point, I am waiting for my plaster to thicken it up so I can manage my edges. How are the ghosts and bugs? Um, they're, they're on hold, Jordan, as we have discussed earlier. I assume you mean sheet ghosts. Jordan is the sheet ghosts king. Uh, he is single-handedly bringing sheet ghosts back to the forefront of haunted house costuming. And I appreciate that. Everybody should have a personal mission. And I do think when his get made, they'll look cool. Uh, bugs, I have bugs I am working on. Maybe next year. Yes. Um, yeah, two ultra cal to one hydro cal mix ratio. That, that's fine. You can mix it. Um, I normally tend to stay a little straight. But in all honesty, if I'm out of hydro cal and I have ultra cal, I'll just dump that in the tub and let the bottom ones mix. But it doesn't hurt anything. I'm going to thicken this batch a little bit, just so it finally cures. What you checking on, Stan? Nothing. You went in there and asked a question, didn't you? I did. Rob solved it for me. That's great. Are you, sure, are you sure that Rob gave you the right answer? He did. That's what I'm worried about. I'm going to talk to you about it later. I gave him two different answers. Is it, is it something with that mask? No, no. Okay. We're good. I just happened to have this mask in my hand when I... I see. Well, I did ask him if we normally cut this part out, but he said not normally. Yeah. Small. We do. We, we do? Okay. Yep. Yeah. On, well, look at the finished one, and those should be cut out. It's breathing. Breathing's overrated. Hold your breath. Why didn't you build up the end of the arm area? Um, because it's a glove. So you mean with plaster, or do you mean when I was sculpting it? But it's a glove, so someone's going to put their hand in there. It's not like a severed arm or anything. No, that is. Yeah, sheet ghosts are pretty awesome, actually. Um, we have one of Carl's. I, I want to do a uh, sheet ghost character for Q line work. What? Really? Yeah. Can we 
do a Scooby Doo haunt while we're at it? No. Outside doesn't have to be all jump in your face chainsaws. Outside you have to have a little bit of cleverness too. I can honestly say I have never used a chainsaw in a haunted house. How long were you a clown? One year. My first year. Are you counting the last costume party that you went to? No, because that wasn't a clown. What was it if it wasn't a clown? It was more of a mime. I didn't speak. More of a mime. Were you in just black and white? No. Then you weren't a mime. Mimes are in black and white. You were just a quiet clown. They can have red noses. Yeah, but not like... Is, is all you had was a red nose? I didn't have a nose at all. You saw the mask. Rob's a secret clown. Not a clown. Not since high school. Oh, uh, the plaster is a little bit thicker over here, but that's because the hand is bent. So what you're seeing, I think, is the bent hand. Yes. Um, how often do animatronic figures and costumes malfunction? <laughs> and how do they malfunction? <laughs> well, so here's the kicker. They're going to malfunction a bit in the beginning, and that is called self-editing. The costume is telling you what you shouldn't have on it. Um, like, if you are a bush monster, and you have all these branches and leaves hanging off of you, and in the course of your duty running through the trail, if certain branches get ripped off, that costume has self-edited the branches that were a problem. <laughs> And then your costume is fine after that. So, yeah. So it was like a Boon Raku Sheet Ghost puppet, Dark Nook. Is that right? That's pretty cool. That's neat. I like that idea. We made a Boon Raku skeleton for Dark Hour last Halloween. I think we made it like a show before or whatever, but we made it. It was fun. Good times were had by all. Hey, Stan, yeah. what about burping molds? Uh, some. What you got? It's got a burp one. All right, so I'm just building up a pleasant thickness. So, Dark Nook, um, I'm going to warn you about Jordan. Jordan is a great person with a giant passion for sheet ghosts. Uh, please, Jordan, personal message Dark Nook, and hopefully he will send you some pictures of his sheet ghosts. So there you go. Dark Nook, of course, has no pictures. Yeah. He just has, we just have to go on his word. Jordan, I apologize for how upset you must be. And your lack of sheet ghost pictures. Lack of sheet ghosts. There will one day be a live episode dedicated to sheet ghosts. What do you think the going rate for selling a sheet ghost costume is? Probably in the high two figures. Uh, mid two figures. Mid. Yeah, if properly distressed in age. Alright, so this is covered in plaster now. Uh, I'm going to work on smoothing it while it's wet. Um, if I try to put fabric over it right now, what would happen 
is that I might get some air bubbles trapped because of the roughness of this. That's when I get it a little smoother. So when I do get to fabric, it can just lay down smooth. And I did some fabric already. I think I've done enough fabric. So I'm just going to do a beauty coat. Long, you know what? I can't tell you how many cool things I've made and I have no pictures of. down 10 minutes before I get more plaster ready to just put on it. The next step is to uh, go to the fridge and get a beverage. did ours on a backpack. Our costume was on a backpack. I do remember your bursting belly. Hello, Dead End Yard Haunt. Great he name. Just, he just showed up. Great screen. My assumption is he lives on a dead end. And, has and does a yard haunt. Yeah. Very descriptive name. I know everything I need to know, right there. No fat on them. Nope. No. Just a little bit of working the clay there. Perfect. I don't have a lot more to do. I could possibly call this mold done right now. I do have, boy, do I want to do that? I have no more plaster in this bucket to use. I'll do a little bit more, but not a lot, just a little. This is a little too thin for me right here. Um, I can use RD-407. Um, it's, a, it's not a bad latex. I, I like RD-407. Normally I use mask latex mini mold supply. Uh, mini mold supply, Fright Props, Streamline Studios, those are all companies that I buy latex from. And 
Uh, Black Lagoon Creature Supply. What? Ooh. Hi. Hello, wife. Shoot it towards the middle of the table, please. <laughs> As our dogs are taller than we think. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on. Food is here. That is good. Morris, come on, buddy. Come on, guys. Come on. Okay. Time for water. Very little bit of plaster. I do not need a lot. What is my all-time favorite sculpt? Um, hey, big dog. Well, I'm molding this hand, uh, and now you're up to speed about this. Um, my all-time favorite sculpt. I was very happy with... Um, a bat creature mask that I made a little while ago, and I'll pour up one of those, and I'll definitely have one of those. Not at Trans World, but I'll be doing that bat creature mask somewhere sometime soon. So you're not feeling good? No, my kids. Oh, coronavirus. Quarantine. Don't say that. Why would you say Put it on a cruise ship. You're horrible. Oh. Uh, Big Dog says, hey, it's Rob and hi, Stan. Big Dog just joined us. Gee. The method you use attaching hair to latex mask, could that method be used to apply on a morph suit and would it stay on? Yes, and a little bit. Anytime you're putting hair on something stretchy, it's going to require maintenance. Uh, what you don't always see about movie suits and costumes is that they're fixing something on it every 20 minutes. You know, it's just not going to last all night. So be aware of that. Um, but do I think it would, I would definitely use silicone that has a good stretch to it to, uh, to apply the hair. What kind of sandwiches are they? Delicious. Just, it, Rose cheese. Okay, great. Have I ever made an animatronic Santa-like distortions? No, I have not. I have not made an animatronic Santa because I hate Christmas. I don't actually hate Christmas. I, I kind of like Christmas. Getting presents is awesome. Um, no, I have not made an animatronic Santa because I haven't done that kind of Christmas haunted house. I may one day. I put Santa beards on other animatronics. So if you want to, like, to the letter of the law, maybe yes, I have. Yeah, we beard at least three of them. Yeah. The big demon. Mm -hmm. Put a giant beard and hat on him. Mm -hmm. That counts as demon Santa. The spider alien thing. He gets dressed up. Werewolf gets reindeer antlers. Yes, Donner. You know why that reindeer, right? Donner party? Right. Because Donners eat people. <laughs> anyway, so 
What goes good with the coronavirus? Lyme disease. That's funny. That's great. Yeah. That made Bill Xmas sad. Oh, because he's Xmas. Hot. Sorry, Bill. I was kidding. I don't hate Christmas. I told you that. We will. Will we someday make a fully animatronic figure? Um, pro probably not. In well, okay. Yes, I probably will, in all honesty, uh, simply because I'll be making, you know, three-foot-high animatronic figures. It's a full animatronic figure, it's just not a six-foot-tall animatronic figure. You had Santa come out of the chimney with a chainsaw. That's just, you don't get more Norman Rockwell Christmas than that. Or Norman Bates Christmas, whatever Hello, cobwebs and candlesticks. I'm glad your drive went well. Oh, Kong Flu. That's that's a, that's a funny name for it. Kong Flu. I did see something that said, you know the coronavirus won't last long because it was made in China. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a meme that said Corona was going to change the name of its beer to Ebola. See, I, what is that game that people play where they have to make a disease that wipes out the world? What? Well, there's one called Plague. It used to be an iPhone game, right? Or it is, it still is? Or it, It's a Flash game. I play it every now and then on my computer. It's on my phone. I play it. It's a phone app. Yeah. And so I just figure with the coronavirus, there's some 12-year-old out there who's just rooting for it. Because, you know, it's like it's a big meme. Yes, the hand is covered. No more high fives. Kong flu a chew. I know Kong flu. Sure. My haunted house is a tent. We build it every year, start mid-August, and we open mid-September. Cool. What's the name of that show? And are you in Omaha? Is that right? Are you in Nebraska? Do I remember that correctly? The Shadow's Edge and yes, Omaha. I met you at one of the trade shows, and I introduced you to someone who else who I thought was from Omaha. Or maybe I was wrong. Because there is Texas, and then there is up north somewhere. <laughs> Says the man from Maryland. Yeah, that's up north somewhere. It's a state that's shaped like a gun. You don't have a problem? You have a problem. Never been to Maryland. Maryland is a tiny state. It's very small. Not as small as Rhode Island. Rhode Island will fit between Dallas and Fort Worth. <laughs> what is on the table next to the fridge? Uh, those are EVA foam helmets that are destined to be turned into apocalypse masks. Because Stan said he was going to get 75 apocalypse masks done in time for Transworld. It was like 45 yesterday. You made 45 yesterday? Four, four to five. Oh. Yeah. I said you made 45, that's impressive. Yeah, 15. Total. Total. So far. Not a roll. There is indeed.
Glenn says, go stand. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, there's burlap already, cobwebs. You missed it. You're in the quarantine zone for the coronavirus? Do a lot of folks have coronas up there? Virus? That's a little scary. Alexa, are you worried about the coronavirus? Sorry, I don't know that one. Okay. Had to do it. Cobwebs and candlesticks out of nowhere says he was stapled to the mummy. Oh. Why did the vampire cross the street to get to the blood bank? Jordan, I'm going to have to silence you for five minutes based on the terribleness of that joke. <laughs> Aha, I got it. They sent 57 people from China to uh, Camp Ashland. Hello, Art Lady Bluntser. Is that Edie? Howdy, Art Lady. Well, it was creative. It like the joke where, you know, how many pancakes does it take to rain a marigold? And the answer is, of course, blue because ice cream doesn't have bones. But and that's a very creative joke, but it's just not funny. So that is why you're in trouble. My favorite is why did the chicken cross the road? Uh, why, bro? Well? Because obviously it's a flight to bird. Well, you know, they never said it walked. <laughs> Could have flown across the road. <laughs> Oh, I did not introduce you the, from Des Moines. Yes, that's my buddy Zach. Jordan, you're bad at following directions. <laughs> this is for Jordan. <laughs> Conventions are very busy places for everybody. So hopefully you had fun anyway, even though you were disappointed I did not introduce you to my friend Zach. Now I know several honkers in Des Moines. None of them like each other. <laughs> Is graph paper a vital tool to for laying out your home haunt? I don't have a home haunt, but yes, graph paper is a vital tool. Uh, that's what I use to lay out pro haunts. It's what I use to lay out uh, all kinds of designs. When I design my booth, I have a big thing of graph paper that I uh, designed the booth on. As long as the dog doesn't eat it. Yes. Yeah. My dog did eat it. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Could you babysit this thickening plaster? Uh-huh. Don't have to do anything yet. When it gets to the right consistency, we'll start smoothing it. Okay. But I need to eat a sandwich. Yeah, you do. Yeah, look at the comments, answer the comments. Yeah. So sick of eating cheese balls. You're the one who bought the tub. I never graph, I stuff crap every Okay. Is the hunchback going to be up on stilts? No, Stanley. The hunchback uh, will not be a stilt character. It'll be a ground character. And it might 
might be stand sometimes because he almost went to puppet college. I took a half day course at the Rotary Club, so I figured I'm ready. What's down? Boy Scouts. Can anyone walk on two peg legs? Yes, lots of people can. Mm -hmm. They're called peg stilts. Good luck, Stan. I believe you. The thing with it is, when you're on peg stilts, you have to keep walking. There's, there's no stopping. You can't just stop and stand there. You got, you got to stick, keep moving. Can you walk on peg stilts? Yeah. Yeah. I have some in the other room. Didn't shed much fur. Aww. Hello, Canada. Yeah. Uh, I suggested a uh, shot towel contacts. Uh, yeah. Fill something on the inside first. Right. And also just kind of fall through the hole. Mm -hmm. Rob, what's that vampire comment on top? Uh, they're making a vampire jokes. Why didn't the vampire cross the road? Because they're afraid of crosses. Jewish vampires are not. They're entertaining themselves. Rob, what's my favorite monster? My ex-wife. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's not. <laughs> Real. I like vampires a lot, uh, but currently I'm really kind of digging Frankenstein. Yeah. I like the idea that I make monsters. So, as such, Frankenstein's kind of becoming my guy. Or Frankenstein's monster, Adam. This is not roast beef, this is straight up steak. Yeah. I didn't think you'd be upset about that. No. And the door is part of this one. Say no more. I'm a genius. <laughs> what are y'all figuring out over there? There's barbecue sauce in the door. Oh! Inspired in like 2026, so that's what it looks like. Should be fine. Inspired in 1996. Well. And a fridge in 96. I know. I think it's crazy. A fridge we can watch TV. Yeah. Science, man. Technology. Oh, modern. You can use the fridge to Google things. I remember when they first came out. I was working at Lowe's. As a forklift rider. Uh, 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 uh. Rob, what is Glenn's question? Uh, a guy was interviewing a pirate captain. He asked, how did you get your peg leg? He replied, I was forced to walk the plank and the shark bit it off. Then the man asked, how did you get your hook hand? He did... Ch I, okay. He messed up that joke. <laughs> he 
No, I don't I don't think he finished typing. Glow forging stuff? No, I've heard that on occasion we're using it so it warm up. Thank you. I'm gonna glow forging stuff? Yeah, at least got some stuff out while we're doing other stuff. Hey luck on still there? Uh I will bring it. Yes. For those of you who don't know, beauty layers are really good for, they just make it easier to handle the mold. And they just look nice. You don't Rob, want, are you smoothing? I am. Okay. You don't want any sharp edges. Don't forget to walk around the other side, kind of smooth that in. If you need more plaster, there's still a little bit in the bucket. Yeah, I need a little bit more. I got this. I've been doing a lot of molding recently. So you're going to get a second uh, pull-off and more detail than anything. Oh, yeah. That's okay. No, it's probably going to be the end. Right, yeah. Put it on. Or just a separate. It'll just be separate. Yeah, I think that more yields going to be good. I mean, I walked in and saw half of it that one day. The other half was under, already molded. Under plaster? How many teeth do you want to do? 42. 21 for Java. How's the cake? Delicious. Of course it is. Stay in one of those comments. I saw one that says question. Is there a process you have to do but dread doing it? Fiberglass. I hate using fiberglass resin. There we go. It's great for making big molds, though. Which I believe we're going to do. Not make big mold. That's good. For the mold jacket, you mean? Fiberglass sucks. Yep. It's itchy. Call me King Itchy. Start Jordan, here. you're kind of getting into some personal preferences. And let's ease off on the uh, fat ropes. Okay, bud? Does that say vampires love fat ropes? It does. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's 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 ease back on that throttle, Jordan. I'm not making all the jokes I could make at that point. Big fat. Did you say I like big molds and I cannot lie. You other sculptors can't be lying. Prob, control your fan base. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can't take any credit for this. Good job, people. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like it, like, it didn't even get close. No. <laughs> Not even I don't even know where it went. That was a barbecue sauce on it. Good? Pick it up enough? They call the puppies to find that one. Don't do it. Puppies are destroyers of products. Okay. Like, I really don't even know where it went. Rob, thank you for your great work on this. Get this guy firmed up here. I'm sure we'll smell it eventually. Just a wrapper. Why not? Is that too sneeze?
remember, when you're working with plaster, always wear gloves. I don't start granny. There's eight masks to the light. That's awesome. The most mask in airport I've had at one time was 24. Is that for a monster camp or just because? It was for a, the precursor to monster camp. Okay. Okay. It was a class that I did at Hong Kong. Oh, you were, you were saying about how you like got no sleep. And it was terrible. Yeah. Worst weekend you your life. Well, the worst show weekend I've ever gone to. Because I was just there to work on masks. I love working on masks, but they weren't even my masks. Canvas. Yes, I have done that some. Grim Path asked the good questions. Has the weight of the plaster ever caused a sculpt to sag or the score of? Yes, all the time. Um, if you are molding a head that has like big shelf ears and you put too much plaster on top, that ear will break off. All off. Monster can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had forgotten that. Wonderful saves happened, though. Yeah, there were some. There were some great saves. Monster cap. Seeing that almost no problem is insurmountable is also valuable. And I have learned over the past week how to mix plaster like at four times speed. I don't wear gloves when I paint, so yeah, a lot of alcohol inks on my hands and that kind of stuff. I rewatched uh, Thursday. I'll be doing some painting. I saw one of Mitch's videos, like from Biddy, where he's, he literally like mixes up a half of a five-gallon bucket in about a minute and a half. Because yeah. he does it like huge handfuls, and like just sifts it, and as quick as he can scoop it and sift it, he was he was in there. Right? I learned a lot about plaster this past two weeks. I, I helped Rob on the eel mold. I was moving in snail space. Snailing out of move space. Okay, I feel happy with my thickness. I want to get down with the thickness. <laughs> Any suggestions on how to prevent the ears breaking off? <coughs> Backfill your ears. Um, run buttresses uh, to the sculpture. Uh, also, when you're molding, you can Put plaster behind the ear first, that way it's got a little support. Let that kick, and then you can do the plaster over the whole thing. The plaster will adhere to itself. Mm -hmm. Jordan asks, can you reinforce it with wire? Sure, you can do that too. I just don't like digging through a mold and running coming across wire. Now, for the big eel that we just molded, we did build it on a wire frame before we... Yeah. That was part of the armature. Yeah. I predict this will be very easy to clean. Yeah. Alright, Stan, I have a question for you. Go. Come over here and look at this. Same mix. Why is this plaster hard already and this plaster is not? Because this was this was in the bucket, I just added it recently, and this was on top of plaster that was already warm. So, so the, the temperature made this kick much faster. Cooked it off. And it's just going to take a bit to get out to this. And also so it's thicker here and it's thinner. A little over thinner here. over there. Yeah. So we have the white. Or uh, mass. When we do the shark, I might actually rent a fiberglass chopper gun. Yeah, those are good. Those are wonderful. When do you intend on, when do you want to do that one? The shark happens between March and July. Okay, so we have a window. Yay, exothermic reactions, exactly right. I like it when we Jordan, do why are you saying butt rice? What, what are you doing? 
Hello, a friend called Five. It's been a while. A buttress. A buttress. Not butt rice. B-U-T-T-R-E-S-S. Buttress. Which is a term from uh, architecture. And, you know, so if there's something that, like a wall, might fall over. But they put another wall this way that's like angled. And that's a little buttress, is what they call it. Flying. If there's an archway, only if it's an archway through it, and you can walk through it, then it's a flying buttress. But most buttresses are not flying buttresses. All flying buttresses are buttresses, but not all buttresses are flying buttresses. They're used a lot in the cathedrals. Right. Because they wanted the majestic height. Very gothic. I've been to several. You were in churches? Yeah. Did I've it hurt? I've been to several churches. Did it hurt? Me or the church? Yes. I was fine. Was the fire quickly contained? Yes. <laughs> Good. I have been burned by holy water, though. <laughs> and you boil it? Just waiting on this to dry now, really. Butt rice. Mm, <laughs> butt rice. That's a flavor I would not enjoy. I will not forget which is masks for trans. Are you guys doing an aquarium haunt? Well, we're doing a haunted house that's uh, like underwater themed. So there's, there's going to be some pirates, there's going to be some Cthulhu cultists, there's going to be some uh, sea creatures. Yeah. Any mermaids? Of course, Glenn is going on about butt rice. At a Chinese buffet in Denton. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Denton, Texas? It's funny because it's Denton. Yeah, because it could be, you know where that is. Uh, yellow, nice. Maybe. We may do a little bit of that. We'll see. Are you talking dead in Texas, Glenn? Cute. No, I'm not going to do a demented SpongeBob. Uh, we may hide a pineapple under the sea, though. That might be a nice aside. There may be cat touch. No. There won't. No? Not as a character. No characters like that. We already have him. He's not. He's the same color. He's also a fire. He is a fire. But it's, the design is different. Yes. Soft right once you go. What? I've watched all the SpongeBob, so. I've never seen an episode of SpongeBob. Oh, you would hate it. Because I am an adult. You would hate it. I. No, I can't be held accountable for that. I had I was a stay-at-home dad. You don't have to watch it with them. Oh. Put it on and leave the room. They'll be fine. Glenn lives in crossroads between Little Elm and Aubrey. Holy crap, okay. What is Rob working on? I, Glenn, I'm from Denton, Texas. Someone asked what you're working on. He's trimming a mask. Trimming an LED Krampus. Isn't they fun? They look a lot different when they're not here. Okay, so speaking of that, I want to talk to you guys about this. I had a thought about the hunchback. Is it important? Yes. And what I'm that I want to do is you know because the shirt will be be over here and you know this this yeah. is the fake arm and then there is you know your arm is over here with the glove on it. I think I want to put like a nipple right here. 
Why not? And then he can say, hey, my eyes are down here. <laughs> like, every time he talks to people, he can say, hey, my eyes are down here. And I, I think that would work. Three the you can't, I get at least three joke characters because of that. That's not a joke character. That's, <laughs> that is a built-in bit, is what it is. Uh, Big Dog just says Stan. That's the whole comment. No. That's all we need. Dark Nook says you should have a Davy Jones, but not the one from the Pirates of the Caribbean, the one from the Monkees. Oh, Friend Called Five says who's the new guy. The new guy is Stan. Uh, that is intern Stan. He's only been here about eight months. About how long? Coming up on eight months. You've been in the shop really? for eight months? Yes. Eight months? Yeah. In the shop? Yeah. Holy moly. Not twice. Uh, eight months, you're still the new guy. Uh, technically, I'm still the new guy. We've got newer people that just never came back. Right. He keeps coming back. That's the kicker. Um, Jordan, I'm not going to talk about dirty rice. Your butt rice really took me off rice for the evening. <laughs> Stanley, I want to make a character that flies. I want to make a stilted winged character that you're able to run on all four feet and then leap and lock your wings together and glide at patrons. Somebody write that? What? That's something you want to do? What? A flying still character. Yeah. Seven, it's been seven months. Seven months. That's what I want to do. I want to do a character that flies. I see insurance rates. Any way to trim silicone molds? Silicone? Should be able to cut it with a razor blade. I mean, yeah. Well, it could be a harpy. Uh, it could be a dragon. Could be a could be a number of characters. A Red Bull gives you wings. Okay, great. Thanks for your help, jerk face. Get in the car! <laughs> Jerky big jerk. Angry, aren't all seagulls angry, Dark Moon? Yeah, there's no happy seagulls out there in the world. Nah. They're just out there stealing ice cream from children. And they don't like pickles. They don't? No. I didn't know that. I'll throw them french fries, throw them french fries, throw them french fries, throw the pickle off the burger. Boy, he got pissed off. <laughs> That's not what I ordered. Okay, Kate. Rob, can you yeah. hand me the accordion? I'm starting to hollow out my uh, armhole here. Your poor management seat, sir. Hello, Linda Forbes. Um, you can message me right there on Facebook. That would work great. You know what? And angry seagulls are actually great. The uh, the part in Finding Nemo where they go mine, 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 mine. It's kind of frightening. Seagull zombies. Grab the rooster from the neighbor and throw it. Seagulls, they love chicken. Yeah. Well, seagulls are terrible people that are birds. I'm hollowing out a little cavey cave in here to clean the mold. Hard watership down was cooled up. I don't remember the. There I don't was remember a seagull. seagull in I don't remember. Wasn't there like a seagull in the Disney cartoon, like the Rescuers or something? Secret of Nim. Secret of Nim. There's no. That was a crow. No, the Rescuers had a seagull. I yeah. like the. He had a crash hat. Yeah, 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 pilot's hat. 
Yeah, the, the leather pirate's hat with the He was a seagull that was a seaplane for them. Yar. Jeremy the Crow was in Nim. Okay. Jonathan Living Seagull. I don't, I don't know that one. Kihar was a scout for the rabbits. Okay. Great. Jonathan Living Seagull is by Richard Bach. It's a great book. Idea for a ghost hunting attraction. Get a Tesla coil, cannon, fault machine, a projector. Uh, you know, I see what it is very to. hard to project onto fog, though. Okay, that chocolate cake is ridiculous. I know, right? Oof. Yeah, for real. I feel my blood sugar shooting. You see him in faith? Worth it. Totally worth it. Totally worth it. Don't kill me like the banana pudding. Yeah. I feel like that was a veil that you can see. You know you're. It wasn't just the banana pudding. We're getting. Pretty well, also the gallon of sweet tea you drank throughout the day. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. You start doing good. the math, you know, it all sort of adds up. Like I ate like four pounds of sugar that day and went to a coma. It was great. <laughs> and that day where I'm almost died. The seagull's name for the rescuers is Wilbur, played by John Candy. Aw. I miss John Candy. I do too. Have you ever seen the movie Nothing But Troll? Steven Seagull. Is Nothing that the, but trouble. Is that the one with the mean boy and Chuck E. Chase? Uh huh. It is the weirdest movie ever. With the judge? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And or sometimes he and, has the and the digital underground and, doing the yeah. Humpty Dance. Yeah. Yeah. That was so. Uh, That's what cocaine in the eighties gets you. Because <laughs> the whole studio said yes to all of those ideas. It's supposed to be a horror film, I think. Well, it's frightening. <laughs> it has aspects. Yeah, for sure. It's a messed up film. In Japanese folklore, what is the name of the ghost that looks like a giant skeleton? Um, that is one of the yokai. And it's a man? I don't remember. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, listen, Linda. All right? Linda, Linda, listen. What happened? Uh, just cut that one the same. Strap it'll, it'll be okay. Leave it on the next one. Um, so, I'm using a metal tool, but it's a loop tool. It's not like it's a scraping tool. And I can see how thick the clay is because I'm going in here from the end of it. Trick I'm really great. only going through the middle. Trick or Treat is fun. It's, it's one of my favorite movies. Have I seen the movie Trick or Treat? Of course I have. That's a wonderful movie. It's one of my favorites. Probably in my top 20. Top, top 15 is even fair to say. I do love that movie. Really? I don't hoard books because I've had to move before. <laughs> and moving a bunch of books sucks. My movers hate me. They're like, what are all these boxes? Oh, 97. Sam boxes. does look cool. Really good friend of yours plays Sam. The skeleton is the Gashadokuru. Okay. Good. I was trying to think of the name of the the ones that look like Japanese ladies, but their necks can stretch out and get like 
as thin as a thread. The longer their neck gets, the thinner it gets. Those are vampires. What are those? What are those the Korean vampires? I have those books at my shop. I right. hide them everywhere. Oh, you got Amanda Jensen has the lollipop tattoo on her arm. Uh, I've never sculpted a sand mask, but I have made a couple because it's made of burlap, so I made them out of burlap. Gashi de Kuro? Gashi de Kuro? That's what I said. Gashi de Kuro. We wanted to do one of those, but we couldn't sculpt them. Dance and make anything. Because they hate art. What? No. You say dance. Hated making anything? Said, said, yeah, you guys didn't make anything. You said you couldn't find a skeleton that was bigger than Asian vampires are called Jungshi. Okay. I like the Chinese vampires that hop. Oh, with one foot? Oh, they have, uh, the ones I've seen have two feet. They just hop instead of. Their arms are out and they hop like they have rigor mortis. They can't move well. So Burlap soaked and watered down wet clay. Yeah, that would look cool. It'd probably come out of the mold nice and easy. Dark Nook, are you still with Rubies? Rob? Doing a little bit of clean up here. Uh, good night, Glenn. Hey, yeah, I can see that dark nook. Locomotives, sweet. Choo -choo. And we are free. You lay that half down for me. It's still warm. So, yeah. Do you want to save this clay or trash it? Uh, that, that clay is the garbage. There's a big old hand. Get a loop tool, Rob. Yeah. Sturdy loop tool. And go down the middle of the fingers and okay. get it all out of the center. And then you can fold it in on itself. Gotcha. Because that's still a little loose. Yeah. You don't want to give it cause to break. I probably should have waited a little longer to open it up. Go fix up the sick cat living in my garage. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Jordan, you got some ideas, bud. He wants to hang that skeleton off of the room. And I'm pretty convinced all of those drones chasing people around videos are fake. Because I've never seen a drone that was quiet enough. They're just so loud. They are. You know? Yeah! Oh, what's that scaring us? Probably the thing making that yeah! noise. You know? Yeah. You've seen the guy who made the flying drone death uh, recently, right? Yeah. That was funny. You've seen the one where the guy made a drone out of his cat? 
Yes. That you did not find as much. Who's it? For a while, I was looking at a company to make Dark Hour a drone that was witch shaped, like a witch flying around in a room. That's awesome. There are several companies that make them. The issue is actually getting a pilot. Yeah, it's not an easy thing. And do not go anywhere near these edges of that loop. Very crisp little edges, and you don't want to knock them off. Take my fingernails. I got take my hunchback's fingernails. What was the last job you did at dark hour today? Power wash. What do you think the last job you'll do here tonight? No, I'll wait. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dressed for it. Rob looks so sad. <laughs> Are you going to make me a power launch this? It was cold and wet. And I didn't like it one bit. Had it been a sunny bright day? Oh, that's awesome, Dark Nook. Um, I know... Uh, Holy crap. David, who was kind of a big sales guy at Ruby's. Um, Dave. He used to be involved with Spooky World, too. And he may have retired from there. Well, Linda, um, I did properly lube up my hunchback hand um, so that it would be mold fairly easy. But also, don't beat yourself up. I've made over a thousand of these. If I don't know what I'm doing by now, there's no hope for me. Yes, they do want to do that, Dark. Uh, um, that, that's the name of the game, you know, for them. Um, make it as cheap as you possibly can. And I, I can see how that would be frustrating to see it come back from China looking like garbage. This tool that Rob just commented on, those are four screws from um, plastic shafted Q-tips. Like the cheapest kind of Q-tips you can buy have plastic shafts like that. I use them for hypodermic needles and I make sculpting tools. Great for skin texture, just brushing in those little lines. They did a real good job for me on the Gorilla. I do really know this. All right. Finish dumping these. <clears throat> Eventually, I'm gonna get a real All right, so this hand mold is done. All right, if that was the purpose of tonight's video, it's finished. Um, because I did manage to get the hand mold bit, hand molded bit. 
and molded. Um, I think we're going to blow this guy out. Probably just paint the layer in. Just paint a little cleaning pool. I feel like I got it out of the nooks and crannies pretty good. I do remember the JC's haunted houses back in the day, and there's still a few around. Uh, there are still a few JC's haunts around. Um, not too many, but there's a few. Make several fold your process on mine, but I think we wait too long to unmold. Yeah, I mean, I like to demold while it's still warm. Yeah, I don't want it to be all the way cold yet um, because if you do it at the right time, there's this beautiful layer of steam in between the clay and the plaster, which really helps you get it off. Uh, the more eel that Rob was talking about that we did. We actually waited, we finished molding it Friday, and then we waited until Tuesday to demold it. I was a little worried it was gonna stick more than it did. It was only difficult to demold because it weighs a couple hundred pounds, you know? <laughs> it is a super heavy. Yeah, it's a beast. Each half weighs about 215, 220. to go to Trans World. Uh, look at the classes and find a class that you want to go to and pick that day. Uh, Thursday is kind of slow. Uh, Sunday is a partial day. So I'd probably say, well, if you go Friday or Saturday, Saturday night I think is the big costume ball. Right? Is that Saturday or Friday? Saturday? Saturday. Big ball. Big ball. Which means we gotta get my costume done. I gotta get my costume done. I gotta start one for me. I gotta You're not gonna one. take your traditional wooly? Yeah, I'm gonna fluff them up though. Oh. Hurry it up. Wolf man fluffing. Jobs Rob will do around here. We've got to draw lines on. Who's my favorite distributor slash wholesale you purchase your supplies from? Um, well, Biddy Mold Supply is pretty close to me, and they have a lot of what I need. Um, they're uh, they're pretty good. I like Biddy Mold Supply quite a bit. I also like. Uh, Fright props. I love fright props. I buy a lot of supplies from them. So there's two good ones. I've broken all kinds. If there's a way to break a mold, I've probably done it. Um, I've dropped them and, and they've broken. I have. I broke one. You know, just trying to pry it apart, opening it up, it broke. And Scott has posted a link to Biddy. There you go. All right, I'm gonna get some latex and uh, paint in a layer before we close it up. I have a question. Yes. So I was, like with the half mask, some of the half mask for myself. Yeah. 
Why would a half mask have both keys built into the form? I don't understand why they do that. I can't see. I can't. I think out they the think it makes them look more professional. Okay. Because they don't sell them where they can be baked. Right. And maybe for doing silicone prosthetics. Maybe. Uh, that's a possibility. Not the best possibility, but that's a possibility. And I couldn't. I it's. I couldn't find a use. I couldn't even Google a reason why you would. Yeah, both keys. Self-healing mat on that table. Ah, it's got all sorts of stuff. In it. Oh, okay. I'm down to like one piece. Of stuff. I had to free up some latex. Traditionally, you would not want to cast up one of these right after you make the mold. You want to let it dry out a little bit. But, in the immortal words of General Custer, Man. How long it'll be fine. You, you should wait a couple days. Days? Yeah. Wait a day or two for all the moisture that's in it to even out with the environment. And what's important is when you paint latex into a mask or a mold, that you don't paint it too thin. If you paint it too thin, it'll cure too fast and immediately dry. And then it will peel back a little bit and you'll get a real weird skin texture if you're not careful. So I put it in fairly thick while I'm painting. I jab it into my details to make sure that I capture all of them. And I work wet. I'm going to do two sides of this mold, so I want to make sure that this side is really wet, so it's got to stay wet the whole time that I'm painting the other side. I should have fit these together again before I just started painting latex. I'm sure they will fit together no problem. I don't want to leave them apart for too long because this stone is going to shrink and move a little bit and I don't want it to shrink at different rates. So normally if I finish a two piece mold I will strap it together so that it stays together. Hello, Lorcan Mickle, Mickle, Mickle. Hello, Lorcan. It's good to see you. <laughs> I've been good, man. I've been good. <laughs> That's I stay a great busy. Question. What was your very first Halloween costume? Okay. So, do you remember in the 70s, they were these plastic things with a big inflatable head? Do you remember those costumes? Yes. That was my very first. Okay, um, the first one that I remember, because, you know, when you're a certain age, your mother picks your Halloween costume, um, the first one I remember was a construction worker, and apparently I was three years old, and I was a construction worker, so it was a flannel shirt, a tool belt, a const uh, construction hat, a hard hat, let's call it. Was it red? It was yellow. Oh. And it said play school on it. Second in command. Right. What's that? 
What was your very first Halloween costume, Stan? I had one of those, uh, I don't remember the company that made it, but remember like they were like the really thin vacuum floor masks that came in a costume with a bottom? Ben Cooper. I had a Gene Simmons Ben Cooper costume. Sweet! It had like the... Your mom was cool! That was what they had left. She thought it was going to turn me to evil, but it's, I want, I needed a costume and we lived an hour and a half from the closest like super, or, uh, supermarket or place at bottom. So that was, uh, for the next rest of my time, she handmade the rest of them. Or she wants you to be Gene Simmons? She didn't want me to grow up to be Gene Simmons. And I, here I, you I are, that. making monsters for a living. I love that outfit, man. I still have it. Ron, would you hand me a bolt banding strap? Yeah. One year she made a uh, gorilla costume for me out of fun fur. Yeah. And she bought we bought a mask. And at the elementary school costume contest, I was disqualified because the mask was not homemade. That makes perfect sense. I uh, was too young to know about suing schools back then, but <laughs> I, I totally feel like I got you. Cause that was that was an awesome gorilla suit. Well, you're done with. The well, that's a first. You just got it in one shot. No, I always get the mold strap in one shot. Ripped in half. Mold Whoa. Strap. Well. That's blue a mold strap. I almost never have done that. Alexa, add mold banding straps to my shopping list. Mold Bendix wraps added to your shopping list. You butchered that. Alexa, add mold banding straps to my shopping list. Mold banding straps added to your shopping list. That's what I said. Thanks for the ride, lady. Okay, for the record, a mold banding strap is a uh, should have been the qualifier for to get on the show face off. <laughs> you can't said. operate a mold banding strap. You don't need to do that. Yeah, you've told me that before. Ooh. This one feels yeah, I'm still almost canoe. Got that well dude. I am still constructing today. That is true. You are? I construct things. You're still constructing today? Like, just today I had to construct the paint slip. Is it what? Rob missed it. I did. <laughs> Beg your pardon? I had to construct a pink slip. Oh, oh, I thought you said you're still. Would you uh, make this? Yeah, I was. Would you planning. sell a car? Yeah, exactly. Exactly what I meant by that. Now, do you think an event like that would only last one day? Wouldn't it be stronger, 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 strongest, weaker, 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 weaker? I think what day you do it on, you've got a brand new broom with low center of gravity, it's not working. And NASA's trying to smoke us all. Someone said NASA, but I don't know if NASA was really ever involved. 
put the barbecue sauce back in the fridge. Okay, great. So you guys missed me just pouring that up. I'm sorry. I'm a crappy cameraman. But I just poured latex in here. Now, I have a little tiny leaf right here. But it's really not that much. You do? Tiny. From where? Uh -huh. Grab me another mold banding strap, I could probably just fix it. This one looks like it's been through some stuff. Everything here has been through some stuff. Including us. First costume when I was a kid was one of those costumes that had a pattern on the fabric that you would cut out the pieces and sew it together. Aha! We seen you. <laughs> Good. Thought I had missed it. Yeah, this is a very slow leak. I have, in the past, mold banding strapped a mask together and picked it up and stepped on the end of the mold banding strap and popped it open when I picked it up. Oh. And then you either have to hold it together with your, just your hands <laughs> while you pour, which is terrible, or it goes all over the floor and it's over. Strength. Yeah. It's not the fun game that you would like it to be. I'm giving it a vibrate. I'm giving it a cool shake it, shake it. That way it will, all the bubbles will come up to the top. And I want to go to the top here because that's where I want the glove to. What a nice high glove. Alexa, countdown. Alarm for what time? 10.30. Is that 10.30 in the morning or in the evening? Evening. Alarm set for 10.30 p.m. Got to come back over at 10.30 and dump that out. Unless you want a bulletproof glove. Right, I don't want a bulletproof glove. I want a regular proof glove. And that glove is the mate to this, which is not a glove. This is the dummy hand. Because your body is working the face of the uh, hunchback. 15 minute wait. Yeah, I don't pour for 15 minutes. I pour up for uh, 90 minutes. For gloves, for masks, I do about two hours. Who was that guy that said he only did it for 15 minutes? Stone Farmer. 
No, it was on one of the Stan Winston videos said 45 minutes was the maximum draw time. But they're also using them for different different reasons. What's that now? But one of the, like, Stan Winston school, which, you know, depending on which one you want, if you watch, I guess yeah. it tells you two totally different things. Of course. Uh, the latex mask one said you never draw past 45 minutes. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah you can. I see you, it. Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> Like, it's not going to explode, I promise, I've seen it. Now would be a great time to bring me any masks that maybe need a touch-up. Nose boy. Noses. The nose nose. Uh, here's the masking tape is over here. Perfect. So i got to touch a hole in this. I've never... Oh. I know, right? No, no, it isn't. <laughs> Almost. He's slowly devolving back into a dolphin. Let me push the, let me push the button. In 1974, I was eight. Mom used a cardboard box and made a table with a four place setting for me. My dad made a pumpkin from wire and orange tape so my head fit in it. I won second prize in the original category. Perfectly lovely. That is, that is a, that is a... Come here, take your nostrils. That is a thought I had forever ago. A table where you sit down on a bucket or something, but a table, some shoulders, and your head's just... What? Take it from underneath. Yeah, I'm going to tape up that little hole right there. I thought it would freak somebody out if the table just stood up and started... <laughs> Wait, what? That was six years ago. And push. You see how that's almost usable, right? I'm, uh, we're patching some little tiny holes in my seam. Right. This one. Is Gene still on? It's patched. Big Dog, are you still on? Well, yeah, he just said now the 15 minute wait. Those years drain. Yep. <laughs> Stan was hoping you wouldn't see him screw up. He remembers all of them. His big dog remembers. Big dog came to Monster Camp and had a printout for Stan of Stan doing something crazy in the shop when I wasn't looking. <laughs> To Big Dog's credit, though, he's not a snitch because he didn't show me. No, he, he only showed you. Only showed him. Only showed him. Oh no, he showed me. He showed me. He's like, Rock, come here. <laughs> remember that time? Yeah, I remember. I was like, I was so he's there. no snitch, which I is was good. There. All right, I am patched, and that's probably you know I just put it. Yeah, I just got it all the like, right stuff all yep. the way. It's supposed to be fifties uh, and sixties. Saturday, which I'm very excited about. That means all the pores that you do will dry faster. It this also, means, not been a bad it also means I'm not going to be freezing my pukus off outside. This has not been a bad winter at all. A bad winter? Try to get that tape more up in there. No. It's, it's been a pretty nice Maybe turn it inside out. <sighs> the same way the problem was made in the first place. Yeah. There was that. There was that. Talk to the camera, Stan. Tell what you're doing. Okay. So I was trimming this mask earlier, and I got in a little bit of rush. And what my intent was, was to trim out this part of the nose so someone can breathe. So I turned it inside out and looked for what I thought was the right place for the nose, and I clipped it. Holy slow. And uh, I missed, so it put the uh, holes are in the top of the nose, and rather than throw this whole thing away, we're going to patch it up. So what I'm doing is taking some tape, and I'm going to turn it inside out again so I can get it as flush as possible. And then I'm going to just put the tape on it like so, make sure I get it on there really well and then do the same thing on the other side. 
guys. So it looks it's a, it looks like a what dragon. So here we are. I'm just gonna put that extra tape on there. Make sure it's nice and snug. Turn it back inside out. So there it is, you can see. Not too shabby. It's not completely gone, but it's pretty close. Tape does a lot, doesn't it? The tape does a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost the same color as a mask to begin with, and when you push it up close enough, yeah, it almost, you almost, almost can't tell. Now you put a little bit of, go to one of the latex buckets, mm -hmm. and get real thick latex off the side of the bucket with your finger, and just fill, spackle in that hole. And show them that, too. I think Rob just took the inside. <laughs> I'm eating these chips. Yard. Through all new buckets, there's not, not a lot of goo on the sides. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Like that. Those pieces. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So on the side of our latex buckets where the glue or the uh, latex gets really thick on the sides, I got some little pieces that I scraped off. Now we have pretty new latex, so normally they're a, it's a lot thicker, there's a lot to pick from. These are kind of sparse. So okay. I will, Rob, I'm going to pour that guy out tonight. Okay. I'm going to pull him and pour another set. I'm going to do two of them. So what I have is this basically it's like a latex kind of a One's a garbage collector. One more or less. Okay. No, one's a color. One's and what I'm doing is I'm fitting it into this hole to cover it up. Yeah. Okay. So are we going to do like all black and white one day and then I'll color the next? Well, I'm going to, yeah. Like Thursday, I'll paint all the Nosferatu. Okay. And I'm going to paint one black and white, two colors. I'm going to get the end of this brush and kind of make sure I push it all the way down in yeah. and it's level. So, yeah, I'll grab the, all the black and whites that I have available and paint them. So, Thursday, you said? Yeah. Okay, so first thing when I walk in Thursday, actually, I've got time. I'll base that other Nosferatu right Okay. Basic strap him so you can just go to town on him. Good eat. Going to town. Uh, I prefer slow zombies. Slow, slow zombies are the only way to balance zombies. If zombies are fast, then their rate of spread has to change. And I'm doing the same over here. Because he has two, two, two nostrils. Two. Two nostrils. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, the nose holes did make it look a bit more like a dragon. Yes, it did. But it is not a dragon. It is not a luck dragon. It is a werewolf. It is a, a werewolf. Would you two of these fine people entertain while I go check on the wife? We check are, away. We are werewolves, not werewolves. I'm going to walk this food back. The dogs will be with you. Stan, did back. you get two sandwiches? I got two sandwiches, thank you. Perfect. Two sandwiches. Two sandwiches. Sandwiches. Green mold, man. Feel it. Feel it in your back. So tell a story or a joke. Oh my god, I don't know. Be Any clever joke. and witty. I can't tell any of my jokes, I'll get in trouble. I'll get fired. I did sales for too many years not to know clean. I don't know any clean jokes. So here's my this nostril. I went ahead and just put a little latex in it, smoothed it out. Um, as you can, once it's once it dries and it grips, so latex, uh, some science if you didn't know, latex will stick to itself, 
and if you patch it up right, hopefully you won't be able to tell. And it won't look like Werewolf has uh, a booger problem. Boogers! Well, we can also, worst case scenario, we can always take a, a felt wheel and buff it down. Right. So that's another, the uh, when we're trimming masks, or when we're seaming a, a, a full mask, like the, uh, you didn't need that one already? What? Like we're on the buffing one. On which one? This one. No. Okay. So, these masks, so the wet latex will stick. Now, it takes a little while. The, um, you know, you have to kind of put it aside and let it, uh, let it cure. So this mask was sitting in, this mask right here was sitting in the uh, mold for how many days, Rob? Which one? Any of these. Uh, they've been in there since Sunday. So these have been in there since Sunday. Two days. So it could, I mean, and that's, that's full cure time. So for this to completely meld and become one with the, uh, with the mask is going to take a couple of days. I can't paint it tonight. The, uh. It's just, it's not going to work. So this is just an easy way. I mean, you only get really two choices with something like this. You can patch it, or you can throw away your whole mask. And that's a waste of your time. That's a waste of your money. I mean, because you don't really, you're losing days at a time. So the, uh, this was the, the best course of action if we wanted to save this mask and not have to uh, get rid of it. And with Transworld coming and the amount of stuff that we're doing, there really is no option to, uh, and we really don't have the time to throw away stuff and, and start over. My personal list is 86 masks and 30 arm weapons. Yes. That's just my list. So it's the same thing, uh, Adam, it's the same with silicone. Like silicone, if you have a rip or a tear, uh, silicone molecularly bonds to itself when you put it on there, so it's not actually patching. You're you're fusing, like on a molecular level, you're fusing it back together with it, with itself. The uh, I got a chance at Hong Kong to meet with people from CFX, and one of the things they told me they glue a lot of parts to their masks, and. I asked them how they glued everything, and they always said silicone. So I asked them if they meant silicone caulk, and they said no. They really take the silicone that they mix up for the mask, and they brush it on, and they glue another silicone part to it because <coughs> nothing will adhere as well as silicone to itself. That's platinum cure silicone, something you should be aware of. Uh, if you use, uh, like, industrial-grade silicone like you buy in caulk uh, or in tubes at, like, Home Depot, uh, that, that is poisonous and you can leach dangerous chemicals from those. That's why you want to stick with like platinum cure or dragon cure silicone for making masks or anything that's going to be in contact for the, with the skin for any length of time. Just the more you know, knowing is half the battle. The other half is red and blue lasers. So yeah, um, spend the money if you have it, if you're going to do the silicone stuff because that's what I started with and the uh, you know, I, the very first, probably, uh, every mold I made for the first year I got into any of this was all with silicone. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something you have to be careful with as long as you buy good stuff and, and you use it out of the box. Then. And that was that. What are we talking about? Um, like the difference between buying your own silicone versus making it with, like, hot from the store. How that's going to be outright dangerous. Well, you don't know what's in it. They don't have to tell you what's in it. Normally, it's some kind of heavy metals are in it, so it's not safe for skin contact. And we were just saying, if you're going to put it on your skin, spend the money and get real yes. silicone. Yes. I'm going to keep these. I like them. They're a nice detail I can use on a pot masks later. Okay. We also fill in. I put that mask with the patchwork up against the wall for that. Okay, were well, you happy with how it smoothed out? Mm -hmm. A little bit of Dremel work would be nice. Oh, yeah. You'll hopefully you won't. Yeah. Mask is patched pretty easy, and I'm glad we got to show that on the screen. Is that you? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me grab me one. I like drinking a soda right now. It's a great idea. It is. 
Can you smooth that patch latex or blend it before it dries? Yes, you can. Use your finger, lick your fingertip, and it works great. That is what I did on my fist. I have to think about. Are you get a basic now. I. My hunch back. If you don't have I can. I'm gonna base out a few. Well, we gotta base out the ones that are other than the werewolf that I stand up. Bring them here. I need to finish seeing this and come back. I do something very unglamorous over here. You guys will excuse me, I'm going to brush my thumb. Yeah, so more straps. There's only one set of uh, I got you. I, I hear you. Add water to a Q-tip? What's that now? Like, add water to a Q-tip? Talking about blending? Uh, I would use your finger. Because the Q-tip has no pressure sensitivity. It's real easy to plow into whatever you've done. I always like to see it. No. There's also something right here. Uh, I, I used to try to pull it to the edge. Snap a do. Snap a do. I've got like 12 minutes before I guess. Uh, it's on the ground. That's where I was told to put them when we're done with them. Check. Just after 3 a.m. in Scotland, gotta go. Good night, all. Oh, good night. Night. Night, Harabiste. Thank you, John Mowry, on behalf of Al. What's John say? Love your work, buddy. Hey, thank you. Hope you guys are uh, enjoying your evening and doing something just as interesting as we are doing. We make stuff. I'm painting a hunchback. What are you doing, Rob? I just got done basing. Well, so once you got the base? All about that base. About that base. Yeah, you gotta wait for the werewolf to dry now. Yeah. And I gotta finish However, wrapping these on. I can go ahead and base this Krampus out. Let's see, if I've got five werewolves, 
Pour it up. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I got five werewolves, moving jaw werewolves to do. Right. But I get them all painted in one night. Well, I've got two of them for you. Two are ready. Well, one is ready. I've got another one poured up tonight. Okay. So there will be your three. Come Thursday, I should be able to get two more done. Nope, just one. Sunday. Upside, I think that molds would, the latex and molds would cure very fast in hell. Probably, yeah. You can not um, yeah. Those nice warm air current. Well, that, it depends on which version of hell you subscribe to. There's an entire thesis written on whether hell is endothermic or exothermic. That's true. I, I think it's an exothermic reaction. I think hell is subjective for those who think they deserve it. But your face deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, face is subjective. so I can get the air. That's all I want in the world, man. Come in. <laughs> Gotta plug in the airbrush. I am, uh, I'm in Texas. Where am I from? I was raised in Maryland. I lived in Florida for about 10 years. And now I'm in Texas. Yeah, Texas! We have some fun. I'm gonna have to redo him a little bit more. Uh, the corpse video is, is a lot of people's favorites that I've done. Corpsing? Yeah. Now, uh, I did learn how to corpse from YouTube. I did not learn it from you. Did you, did you, use, did you use plastic, Rob, or? Yeah, I used plastic and stain. Who did you learn from? Uh... I read about it in a forum. I didn't see any videos. To my knowledge, 
I had the first plastic corpse ink video out there. Well, it's a great technique. To my knowledge. No, I learned it from somebody who was established in the effects industry. So, I didn't make it up, but it works well. Everybody modifies the technique to work for themselves. I saw somebody do one the other day with a cloth. Which and a heat gun? Uh, no heat gun, just cloth and latex. And it actually came out really nice. A lot of folks do cheese cloth. Yeah, I can see that. No, he did like bed sheets and cut up. Don't say bed sheets. Jordan's watching. I'm talking about ghosting him. He loves his sheet ghosts. I was slightly offended the first time I saw our sheet ghost. Why is that? My response was, really? really? We're doing this? Really? And then did you enjoy it? The actress really made the character. She did a great job with that. She was hilarious. She had a good time. I'm just making this hunchback head fleshy. And my plan is to do some underpainting on this so that um, when the fabric goes over it, you'll see that underpainting a little bit. It'll kind of hide those eyes. James, I'm working on a hunchback right now. Yeah, the, uh, the hunchback is going to be fun, I think. I love classic monsters. And this is just a good chance to do good chance to do a good classic hunchback look. But, you know, more than a hunchback, he's real uh, he's got options with him. He's gnarly. I'm going to have to say that's one of the ugliest, uglier faces that you've sculpted. Well, I didn't want to make him not human, you know. He's a person. He just has some stuff going on in his life. James Minnick, no, that is not for the haunted house. No, this, well, this is for a haunted house, just maybe not mine. Although, I was actually thinking about doing one of these for the March show. Getting one finished. For the March show? Yeah, outside. Oh, that's fun. I would do him. That would be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting, if you uh, still still go that way, I'm looking forward to wearing him at the train home. that dry. Um, the fist that I hatched I think is dry enough to paint. Yep. This is not the big sprayer that I normally use to base things out. This is my small little black airbrush, but it handles the lake mask paint just fine.
Again, this is a dummy hand that will be probably holding dead cat, garbage bag, whatever. What I like about the big airbrush is uh, how fast it'll get something covered. It's like I've been doing this forever. All right, there we go. And now the, the other hand for this, I actually just poured up. Uh, and you probably can't tell a huge change because all I did was painted it from latex color to flesh. But that's the base I'm putting on this guy, that's the base I'm putting on the mask. So this will all work out. They're all going to be friends. A zombie vampire cat. Well, I try to explain things that I have to explain to the audience. They can't figure it out quick. I don't have to tell them. Why so many eye holes? I counted five. So you can look uh, in different places at the same time. Um, this way I don't lose peripheral vision. And also, I don't necessarily have five eye holes. One of these holes could be for breathing. <laughs> There's a stool you know, I can see over there. I, can, I have a real good field of vision because I have four eye holes. And eye holes are important to seeing things. Are you going to put a hole in the mouth? What's that? Are you going to put a hole in the mouth? What for? So he can eat things. No. <laughs> Big old drumstick. <laughs> you know, we have a whole ton of those in holes. We do have a ton of things in them. <laughs> Turkey legs, no less. Okay. I've been looking around the whole thing. All right. Anyway, that is the hunchback. So I have some leftover clay and I have a need for a dead animal of some sort and I have an hour before I get to pour out this glove. Guess what time it is. It's dead animal sculpting time. I think, uh, so Stacy is really concerned about a cat. Yes, she is. She that the, the dead cat is going too far and there'll be public outrage because of a dead cat. Which I understand. How many people watching think it should be a dead cat or perhaps a dead possum? How do you feel about a dead possum? We have, well, I don't think a rat is big enough. So you're, you're making up things. We, we discussed cats and possums. New York rat. New York rat's about the size of a house cat. A banana tree rat Possum, is even bigger. Cat. Neutrina. Neutria. Neutria? I went, to, with, I went to high school with Neutrina who did not like the Nutria 
were named so similarly. New York rat, dead in hot. Woo! So, Rob. Yeah. Do me a favor. What do you mean? There's a bag of clay right there. It's a white garbage bag. Yes, sir. It doesn't look like a bag of clay. But I swear to you, it is. You know how big your dead possum is going to be? About hang? this big. That's tiny. Well, it's got to hang from its arm to the ground. It can't drag on the ground, oh. so it can't be too big. You wrap the tail around it. I still hold true that if there's anywhere you can get away with a dead cat, it's transitory. I believe you. I'm I think you're right. Raccoon? Raccoons are hard to kill. The hunchback would live in the city, therefore a cat. I like your reasoning. You're really thinking this out. Raccoon, cat, possum. Rob, I need you to count up the cats and possum vote. Here's what's awesome about a dead animal. You don't have to sculpt them well because you don't know how they died. Zombie vampire cat. Big dogs are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you are to explain. Wants to make me work. <laughs> You're killing me, Gene. Seven cat, one rat, two possum and a rat. Three possum and a rat. Three yeah. rats. Cats win. Cats win. Cat is winning. Cat is winning. What about a bird-like pigeon? Um, as opposed to a non-bird-like like pigeon? Is there a non-bird-like? Yeah, non Dead-end haunt, sheep ghost cat. <laughs> sheep ghost cat. You're killing me, small! I thought that was funny. Do you need the air for a while? So I, I don't need it. You gonna base that out? Yes, sir. Awesome. Actually, you want to help me do something real quick? Yep. Because I don't want to throw my back out there. I don't know. Okay. So I think I'm going to go possum just because I want to sculpt the possum. I asked your opinion and then I denied you. Now you know when Rob says I'm a terrible person, you know he's not wrong. You know, look back to what I did to you guys tonight. I led you on this wild goose chase. Just think sculpting a possum would be really fun. Especially a dead possum. I'm not even going to look at a picture of a possum. I'm just going to go. Kind of have pot bellies and they have very pointy faces, so I'm going with that. Yes, he does. The bird would make sense because he lives. You're right. The bird would make sense because he lives in the bell tower. That is correct. And you can see I'm just getting real general shapes here. Thank you. Thank you. Bird would make sense. A miniature gargoyle. Amanda Jensen voted possum. Does that make four possum? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of making a possum. You are? Yeah. What the cat one? Well, we don't I want. Said, I said they would vote. I didn't say I'd not veto it. That's fair. Stacy, they, they could have. They could have all just agreed with Big Dog and said vampire zombie cat, and then I'd be like, no. no. Eighties movie. Yeah. No. Record. Need to pull off the record. 
people were talking about that Better Off Dead the other day on the internet. Oh my god, I missed that movie. Two dollars. Go watch it. It's, it's a great right. film. I don't know. I'm gonna pay for it. You like, like raisins? I'm not... I'm gonna put raisins in French fry in Peru. One of my favorite lines in that movie is like, oh, that's a damn shame. They've been throwing away a perfectly good, good white boy. <laughs> <laughs> no monster. No monster. Actually, there is a monster in it. He does a Franken uh, Frankenstein thing and brings a life, and it turns into Sammy Hagar from Van Halen and sings "Everybody Wants Some." And it's claymation and everything. You haven't made me want to watch this movie. It's so good. It's so good. You remember, like back in the day, every John Cusack movie used to have some kind of animation in it. Yeah. Like some kind of cartoon or something. One Crazy every... Summer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll... There wasn't one in Say Anything, though. No, I'm saying, like, after that, when he sort of started, like, started getting out on his own. It's like, I feel like he was, like, some failed animator or something, and they let him throw in his own cartoon or something to get him in the movie. Maybe. Rob? Yeah. I need the wooden sculpting tool that looks like a paddle in that front right bin. There's a monster at your front door. Go see what it is. Probably a guy in a place. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Or it's Gene. No, it's James Minnick. That out pretty well. What I do. There's a wiring tool that you were using. Here it is. I want a pet possum so bad. Here's some better off the edge of the Why did the dad buy the car? The one that stayed in the auto cocoon? What, because Beth found it. I don't remember. Tasty. I believe the trick was. Tasty. No. It's everywhere. It's what everywhere. was Better Off Dead about? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, great. It's about John Cusack, unrequited love for a French exchange student. Actually, it's unrequited no, love for a No, it's about this bike. girl who dropped, who dumped him. For a good-looking '80s guy on the ski team, Stan, Rob, hand me that round disc under Stan's computer, please. Kind of ace. We're getting there. You know what the street value of this mountain is? Look, I went to this high school for seven years. No doubt. <laughs> Hold on, what? <laughs> That's a quote from the movie. I went to this high school for seven years, and but I'm no dummy. Hey. Evening. This this makes you nervous? Oh, the tilt a world bucket. Yeah, uh, I probably. Actually, what you can't see is a bunch of clay right here weighing this bucket down to keep it from tilting over, I hope. I'll put even more in there. See, now the bucket has more weight and it's less likely to tip over. Apparently, at some point, South Park made fun of Better Off Dead. Did they? Apparently, that's what they say on the comments. Two dollars. You know what? I don't think a possum is out of place either for the uh, church tower, because I, I think 
a possum would get up there and, and do some crazy stuff. I don't think that's out of character for possums. As soon as Stacy said she thought people would be upset at a cat, I said, how about a baby? Because, you know, no, that one bothered us, man. Right. That's when I would turn down the roll because I don't want some old lady wailing on me with a purse. You sick bunch of weirdo. Came the wrong trade show <laughs> There should be a little quick one piece mold that I will foam the, the possum and then I will hair the possum. And the hair will cover all of the back. I'm not worried about the back of the possum. How will you hear it? Just great for a rabbit. Okay. Okay, you can have a pet possum, but you can't buy them. You gotta find one. It's, it's, it's a small possum. Like small really? Possum. You're allowed to have one? Yeah, it's like they just be me as hell. I've done the dead baby at my haunt in the baby nursery room, and we had a baby launcher in the room to. Awesome. It's all funny games you break out the baby launch. It's, it was literally games. You got like a net, you know. And you're, you're shooting the baby for points. I'm just very quickly roughing out a possum here. And removing all the things that are not possum-like. See, an armadillo, though, I don't think most people have those. Like, I think they're mostly down south and they're not up north, really. It's hard to translate. Yeah, My favorite moment in Bram Stoker's Dracula, and not in Bram Stoker, in uh, the original Dracula, the fellow in the Nosy, is there's a castle scene and the armadillo runs across the floor. I didn't think they had armadillos in Europe. I don't, I don't, I don't. 
don't know. They Alexa, have... are there armadillos in Europe? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. Armadillos are New World placental mammals in the order Singulata. The Chlumicidae and Basidae are the only surviving families in the order, which is part of the superorder Xenophora, along with the anteaters and sloths. Did that answer your question? It did. Because she said New World marsupial. Yes. It's the only marsupial in North America. Now, you could have done the cat, but you could have made it cartoony and made X's from the eyes. And then a tire track around across the village. Nobody could get upset at that. Then you're implying, though, that the hunchback drives and hit a cat. No, he just found a dead cat on the side of the road. It's a very hunchbacky thing. Okay. I don't think that Rob's hunchback and my hunchback shop at the same target. I don't know. <laughs> Armadillos carry leprosy. Yes. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. What type of foam will I use? I'll probably just use a uh, some kind of a flexible foam so I can peel them out of the mold pretty easy. Armadillos do carry leprosy, that is correct. <sighs> hey, Alan? Rizzo. Yeah. Is it, <laughs> why do my molds get actual mold on them? I can answer this, actually. Please help them uh, get moldy, even when I keep them inside and make sure they don't get wet. Uh, well, um, they shouldn't, if you keep them inside, they should not get mold on them. Do you put them away wet? Because that will do it. Humidity. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be just too humid for them. What happens when your wet clay starts getting mold in it? Go now. Uh, not to spray the vinegar. vinegar. Vinegar kills all mold. Yeah. And mold James, I've made eight masks today. Uh, here. Do we have some uh, more of those clamps somewhere? Yes. Not a clamps. Yes. We're going to run out of clamps for sure. Alexa, add clamps to my shopping list. Um, I've added clamps to your shopping list. Thanks, Thanks Alexa. Just take that. Thank you. No worries. These guys are in the process. I've uh, poured up quite a few masks today. Pretty much all I've been doing is messing with masks. Making masks, putting masks, throwing masks. There are not possums over seas, and I thought he was carrying a cat because he played with it too hard. That could have been, you know. Got a little too rough with the cat. That's good reason. Good, good follow through. He pet it too hard. And I will name him good. And they will name him good! James, all kinds of masks. We got everything happening today. Yeah, because there's a lot going on. We're getting ready for Transworld. We're going to have over 80 different masks in the booth. So Rob is getting us set up for that. Lots of different masks. You're very concerned with what you're doing, James is. 
Over 86 mass, James. So that's my poor list. Right now I'm probably at about close to 30. So everything from werewolves to fishmen to grouches. Grouches. A couple Frankensteins, some trolls. Yeah, so there's over there. Get you some. All right, anything else to base out before I put the gun away? I see... Yes. No, he needs to be strapped. See that? Cover? Guy with the teeth and... Yeah. He needs trim, too. Base out? Yeah, for he needs out. some trimming. Oh. oh, that guy down there? Yeah. Okay. That we're going to turn into a, a swear wolf. I'll leave that for now. The ones for the werewolf shelf, we can you know have a couple different designs to play with. I agree. It's the uh, the ones for the suits. Woo! Will have to all be the same. <sighs> uh, it's a game of it. Hey Rob. Yeah. The camera's now solely fixed on my crotch. Could you fix that? Yeah. Thanks. Stan was just giving the people what they want. He was giving them what they want. I know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep that one in the sick. <laughs> people what they want. <laughs> we are in the uh, Dallas, Texas area. We're near Dallas, Texas. And I want these legs to be kind of chunky because it's cleaning them out and I don't want to go crazy. I'm smoothing at this point. I'm smoothing. I'm going to put a tongue in his face because I want the tongue hanging out to the side like he did. Uh, he will be being hung upside down by his tail. I think that'll be nice. Hey, Crob. Yeah. Can you grab me a small pumpkin, too? Yeah. Twelve small pumpkin teeth. Twelve small pumpkin teeth. See, I get more and more demanding. Yeah, I usually do. Who are the big ones? We have so many big pumpkin teeth now. It's wonderful. It's great. You're going to go all over that sea serpent. How do come in package? Sixteen. Great! Super! You're in luck. These are the small ones. Okay. That did not open. <laughs> Favorite up and coming mask sculptors? Man. Stan's pretty good. Uh, I like him. I'm getting there. I'd, I'd have to look at Facebook. I, I really would. I, I don't remember their names right now. But, but there, there are some good ones that are fairly new. How about this? Everybody who ever came to Monster Camp. What am I looking forward to seeing at Transworld? A quiet hotel room. My eyelids. My eyelids. Um, well. Actually, I'm looking forward to a lot of the custom costumes that will show up at the ball. I'm looking for new products in the dark zone. I'm especially hunting down uh, airbrush makeups this year. Yeah? I am looking for airbrush makeups. That is the main thing I'm purchasing at Transport. Is makeup? Yes. Airbrush makeup. I get stencils. So he's like Wolverine? I want to work at home. I want to be able to work at home. Gosh. He's got like Wolverine clothes. You know he's dead. He might be playing possum. Oh. Hey. Rizzo. Dead end haunts got the jokes. Okay, all the all the latex is off the floor. 
All the molds have dwelled. And you know what? Uh, Unit 70 is back at Transworld this year. Sweet. I always look forward to seeing stuff at their booth. They have some good stuff. Which trash ones do we need to go out? This one? The heavy one. Is that heavy one? Yeah, heavy. It's only going to get more heavy if it stays here. I know. Bart was looking at me crazy because I kept loading up bags about a third of the way, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, here, look for one. He's like, oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. I'm a thick. Turns out. I'm going to, I assume, is this studio in someone's garage, or do you all rent the space somewhere? It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, this is, my house is just over there. I bought a house with a shop on it, uh, but this shop is bigger than my old house. You're only seeing one room right now, and there are, there's another room over there, and a loft, and a shed out back, and a good sized back porch. That is all shop space. So... It's kind of someone's garage, but mostly it's its own building. It just happens to be on my property, because that makes, makes way more sense than renting something somewhere else. And we spent a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. You're looking at the three guys that spend the most time. Especially right now. During this time Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Transworld. All that, right. Let's stop. What area of St. Louis do you recommend to stay at looking to do Airbnb? As close to the convention center as you can get. And there are some super sketchy areas of St. Louis, man. Uh, it, you know, it just won a really prestigious award. It's the new murder capital of the United States. It is? Yeah. It is? When did that happen? January. Really? As of January of this year, they said St. Louis is the number as the number one murder rate. I've walked We're number one. We're number one. I've walked the streets of St. Louis at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't think they ever have problems. Well, you've only been what to part the downtown section. Yeah, what part of St. Louis? Not in the rough parts. Not in the good murdery parts. It can't be worse than my neighborhood where I live now. You also do a real... Yes, it can. <laughs> yes, it yes, can. It absolutely can. Um, you also do a good job of looking homeless. Yeah, I like, don't look like somebody wants to. Most of the time, so... You know that's yeah, right. while you're robbing him, Rob was like he's going to ask you for a cigarette. <laughs> Which is entirely possible. <laughs> hey, man, can you at least give me a cigarette? Yeah, let me think yeah. about smokes. I'm going to rob you. For what? <laughs> I came out of Terror on Church Street once and got into my car, and there was a homeless man hanging half out of my car. The door was unlocked, and he was getting all the change out of the console. And I said, listen, you can have all the change, but you're cleaning out the whole damn car. <laughs> so I, I made him walk back and forth to the dump, because my car was not nice. Are you defending St. Louis, Adam's family? I will tell you that one time I had to go to a Walmart in St. Louis, and it took me to the wrong one. And I know that because the cashier said, you better get in your car because you're in the wrong Walmart. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that heads up. Okay. How's my dead possum looking, Rob? Hey, can we name him Pogo? Why would you name him Pogo? Pogo possum. No, because... Was it Pogo? Um, it was a political comic strip in the 70s and 80s. What was Gacy's clown name? Pogo. Pogo. Oh. I didn't even think about that. I told my roommate if he really wanted to scare me. Why are these called George? They're all named George. I like really, I don't like really generic names for pets. That's my dog, Kevin. Larry. I've got a, a Joey, a Cooper, and a Ross. You have a pet named Cooper? Yeah. Is it short for anything or is it just Cooper? Cooper and the Dachshund. Rob. Or, or whatever. Rob has a child named Cooper. His name is Copernicus. Cooper is my Dachshund. He's, uh, we didn't know what to name him, so we had a vote, like a family and friends vote, and someone said Cooper, and that got all the all the runaway attention, so that was his name. You know, we, I wanted to name him Nicodemus, but then my ex-wife said something that changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I really told him. 
They include East St. Louis in that, and that is across the, across the river in Illinois. Oh, meth. They say meth. It's very big in St. Louis. Thank you, big dog. If I get it for a deal there, I'm down. You live in the meth capital of Texas. Quinlan is not the meth capital of Texas. Oh, I thought it was. There's a lot of them. We're in the country, so there's, I think Hunt County may be the meth capital of a county, but I don't think it's a city. A couple of years ago at Transworld, after going to darkness, the group of us went to look for a sports bar. And we pulled up to a scary-looking bar and went inside, and the ladies were barely dressed. How scandalous. Rob, Rob, Rob says, that's terrible. Where exactly was this what bar? What was the address? I want to avoid it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the rest of the story. We all know I don't have that kind of money. Rob can't be affording no sports bar in quotation marks. <laughs> and Nora, that's the name of the quotation marks sports and bar. If, Nora, if you're watching, I'd never go there. <laughs> CYA, Rob. CYA. She knows I don't have money either. <laughs> we ain't got stupid money. We got haunt money. <laughs> I got. Yeah, you got those, that mad haunt money that mad always flows around. That mad haunt money, baby. I got enough money to eat, barely. All right. All right. I'm going to take my tired cell phone. Okay. I want to stay eight more minutes. That's how long it'll take to print out that very last helmet on the very last piece of phone. I just use okay. the there so I know they include that side. More phones should be here shortly. Oh, you got more phone coming? I hope so. There's so much crap coming. Look on top of my car as you walk out. They the packages that I brought in. Or I brought down. Actually, you guys can bring those two big boxes yeah. in while you're waiting. Yep. I'm using this to bevel the uh, underside of that possum. And that way, it'll look a little more 3D. Hey, Dan. <laughs> oh, the Chewy box actually goes to the back porch. Of course it does. That is dog food. What, the, the Chewy, chewy box? Yeah. yeah. We used to do Chewy. like, man. Why do you stop doing show? Um, because they were they w we wanted like this really big bag. We had that merit. We feed them merit food. Yeah. And the big bag is far cheaper than a small one. Like if you add it up, like you've been buying two of them, and they would always be out of it. And they say, oh, we'll we'll, we'll rush it to you when we get it. And we just kept having to wait. So I just said, screw it. I got a fence mark to get it. I mean, if they got what you want, it's awesome. You don't have to go shopping for that stuff. It's cheaper, too. Yeah. It's actually much cheaper. I mean, because the cat litter, <coughs> we, used to, we uh, for a while, that's all we got from them just because, I mean, that stuff's cheap anyway, but it was even way cheaper. Yeah. Studios. Silky Studios. I found every part with my feet. Okay, I think he'll look good hanging upside down dead. Yeah. That would get make him smell bad too. Well, you could. Try that uh, trace function on there and see what it does. You know, we could. There's this stuff they use to train uh, cadaver dogs. Well, froggy frog has all kinds of sense. Oh, this 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 froggy frogs look like perfect because um, it's used to train cadaver dogs, and it's bad. Let me just 
put one drop Why on. do you assume it's better than what Froggy says? Why would you make that assumption? Because I have smelled Froggies. I've smelled this. Take it easy. Last thing else, me amigo. Good night, big dog. I'm just making a possum. This is like bonus material here. All right. I will see you tomorrow at work. All right. Do you want me to take this so you don't forget it? Yep. Okay. Because I want to have it there. All right. You should write, I'll write your name on it. Good night, internet people. Talk to the bye. Bye. Fun, simple, dead possum. Big dog, I think you said good night like three times. But have a good night, sir. Very simple sculpture. What's going to be the star of this is the hair on it. Open up the jaws a little wider than they will normally sit to accommodate for these teeth. Uh, on this guy, uh, not that much. I'm going to set the teeth and then do a final check. And uh, any edges that still look squared on these legs, I'm going to knock off with the uh, tool. And then I'm going to rake him out so he has like a fur texture on him. And he'll be done. Because what's going to make him is hair and paint. It is 10 o'clock. So I will probably let you guys go. Um, we've been on for quite a while. I appreciate all of you guys hanging out with me. So, uh, we're working on a dead possum here. Let me pull him up and show you, actually. Remember, he'll be hanging upside down. So that tongue will be out of his mouth, hanging over his head. Hey, Stan. I'll be right back. Oh, well, you know what? I've said good night. I'm going to say good night. You guys are awesome. Have a great night. And of course, go make stuff.